on the same map. Anyway, so let's do question A4. You said A4, right? Right. Now, in maths, you're supposed to show you're working out. You don't, you don't just write the answer. Even though your textbook has got, a, has got answers at the back, those answers are not complete without the working out. We are mainly concerned with how you get the answer. Okay? The answer is not, it's not extremely important, but how you get to it. Right? So, we have minus square root of 54. Right? So, since here we have got a negative of a square root of 54, when we want to determine the two integers such that this minus square root of 54 is between those two integers, first thing, we identify a positive perfect square, which is greater than 54. Okay? Which perfect square is greater than 54? And it is close to 54. So what? 64. Now, because here we have got a, a negative square root of 54, means when I want to work this out, I have to write it as square root of 64, then I put the negative there. It's less than square root of minus uh, 54. Then, which perfect square is less than 54 but close to 54? Mm. What? 49. Since we have a negative here, then we put our negative as so negative square root of 49. Now, if you did the work and you have got this step here, put a tick in your book. Right? With this step here, it indicates that you know how to approach the question. Then we know that square root of 64 is 8, so this becomes minus 8 is less than minus square root of 54 is less than minus 7. You know that from your knowledge of integers that minus 8 is less than negative 7 from your grade 8 and 9. You did integers. Okay? Then here we can say, therefore, minus square root of 54 lies between lies between minus 8, because that's the smallest, and minus 7. Then you are done. Okay, so if you do your working out like this and you write your conclusion, you are assured of your full marks. You need to learn to show your working out. Okay? Then, but there's got any question? Okay, if you didn't get it right, then you must write corrections using a pencil. Corrections, you must write corrections and then. You use the pencil to write the correction. Then, but we have got a question. Now, if you don't have a question, then allow me to move on to number five. So we have got the cube root, sorry, the fifth root of 30. It's the fifth root of 30, which means we want a number such that if we, if we multiply it by itself five times, we get 30. But in this case, we are not trying to find that number. Right? So, I move on to the next page. So this will be number five. So we want the fifth root of 30. Okay, now we need to find okay, a number which is greater than 30, okay, but close to 30, such that we can easily find its fifth root. What is that number? We need to find a number such that the fifth root of that number is an integer. Which number is close to 30 and has a fifth root, which is an integer? It's 32. So, we say the fifth root of 32. We know that it's a 2. Okay? Then, the fifth root of a number, which is less than 30, okay? Which is less than 30, but it is... It is close to 30. To be a what? The 1. We don't have any, any other number between the 2 and the 1. So the only best, uh, the best number here is going to be a 1. So we can write here the fifth root of 1. Therefore, your answer is going to be 1 is less than the fifth root of 30 is less than 2. What this means is the fifth root of 30 
lies between 1 and 2. Okay, so the fifth root of 30 lies between between 1 and 2. Okay, so you can see that I'm really working on. If you, if you get a question like this in a test, this is how you are expected to approach the, the question. If you skip steps and you just write the answer, you may lose one mark or two because of not showing the working out. Then, but we have a question. Right. 